Hey everybody, um, part three here, we're going to do all the details. You might notice a slight difference in the paint job. I went ahead and tried to uh, redo the stencils. I wasn't pleased with them and I was getting a little OCD about it. And if you can tell here a little bit better, uh, I let the paint fully dry and then took off the stencils. Um, and I didn't have a big a problem as I did the first time with it um, sticking to the stencils when I took it off. Uh, so this ended up looking a little better and I did do the interior in silver which is a little bit different but I, I think it looks better I had to redo it so might as well um, I did you see I put a magnet on the back there uh, that's to keep the door open and closed um, I'm actually gonna put some little towel guys in there when I'm done with all my tanks um, so the next part is the uh, uh, magnet I put to change out the main gun this main gun will change when I when I end up finishing, which I'll probably do a part four at some point, uh, where it's going to be here. Here's your hammerhead and skyray upgrades, and this is how I did them. For right now, the parts and um, the parts that I have and what I'm doing right now, I'm just making the three devil fish. Uh, so later on down the road, or if anybody wants me to do it, just let me know, and I'll uh, get those kits and get them working. Uh, these are all the pieces I had extra basically three little landing gear I went ahead and painted these I did not I lost the recording for it so basically I just dry brushed them with silver and then added a little bit of copper on each of the uh, little joints and yeah I'd had some flash on there I didn't get but uh, uh, so the next start uh, the next step in this is we're gonna start um, getting these doors off uh, these remember from the second video I glued them on just enough to cover up the inside uh, and they came right off really great actually uh, I'm just gonna get all the little pieces off and now we have basically the main thing and then the pieces uh, the next step is going to be applying a, a black uh, base coat to everything I either want black or metallic uh, I really do recommend anytime you paint any kind of metallic paint it over black uh, it just it looks a lot better it looks more like metal um, especially if you don't do like a solid coat of it and even with a solid coat it really it really lays down well on black uh, I went ahead and uh, sped this up quite a bit but what I wanted to do is I, a lot of videos will say like hey you know this is how you do it and then one second later you see it's done um, so I decided a new thing I wanted to do with my painting videos is I'm not gonna cut anything out you can see how long it took me to do each step and I will speed it up, so I speed this one up about 16 times faster than normal, I guess. Um, but anyways, we're going to go through this whole part. This black, the step doing the black was the largest step. Um, and I did it with some watered down paint. Uh, that's why I like using the off-brand paint. It comes real thick and then you can get it whatever thickness you want. I just didn't want to get a clumpy paint on it. Uh, also, that first coat's a little goofy because I have a glossy paint underneath and I'm putting a flat paint on a glossy paint. Um, so right here I'm doing all the pieces I either want black or uh, to be some sort of a metallic. And I'm just kind of going as, as I go, I'm like, hey, this, this would look good black, this would look good metallic, I'll go ahead and do this. Um, this tech step took the longest, but uh, it's worth being neat also. So. I was getting pretty pleased with this when I was seeing it uh, dry. Basically, you could tell I did as much as I could before I felt like there wasn't a part of the model I could grab without smearing some paint, and then I'd leave it. The uh, uh, getting the black down, I ended up doing two coats on it. Uh, most of the time, you just use a thick coat of black. You only need one coat, but I kind of felt like doing this twice. Um, get a little bit smoother. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, so I'm doing a little bit of rambling, but I didn't want to cut any of this video out. I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't misrepresent how much time it actually took to do this. Uh, a lot of the black I put down is eventually I want to do metallic. I'm like, no, this actually looks pretty cool black. So I'm like, yeah, let's keep going with that. If you notice also, um, right now you can see it's a really flat black. Um, and I use the same color paint under the... Uh, hex pattern that I airbrushed in the last video and you can see a very stark contrast between the shiny and the flat there 
Uh, this is a problem with uh, cheap paint that you can easily remedy by just base coating the whole thing. Uh, the next I went with some uh, Walmart brand antique copper uh, folk art paint, my favorite uh, metallic paint I've ever used. This specific, specific color, I guess. It's been on every army I've ever created. I just love it. So I end up doing, just going to do some details, start going with it and be like, okay, uh, what would look good to wear? And uh, as, a, as a general idea, when I start doing a model, I kind of want to spread each color out among the models. So you don't want like, say the back of the tank to be a whole ton of metallic and the front to not have any. Um, so I just kind of put it where I thought it would look great. You can see how smoothly this paint goes on. Um, as far as my recommendations with painting metallic, add a little bit of water, uh, let it be kind of watery. That way when it dries, it will dry as a gloss and not chunky. If you do it too thick, it's, you're going to see the brush marks because it is a shiny paint. Also, if you notice, I'm using a very big brush and I'm doing very small pieces. Uh, for me, and this is different for everyone. I like using the biggest brush I can that has a good tip. Uh, when you're painting very small parts, uh, like you'll see me pick out some really, really tiny stuff. Uh, like here's some lines I'm painting. The trick to this is not actually painting it. Uh, you just want to touch the brush to it and have it kind of suck the paint to it. You're not actually going to paint these tiny dots. You're just going to touch your brush to it and let the paint um, kind of naturally go. So this step that uh, I've already talked halfway through is adding the silver. Um, the silver uh, paint, uh, I had to put on a bit thicker just because it was a little more see-through. Um, <clears throat> which requires a longer drying time, but other than that, it's not real bad. Uh, I wanted to just kind of spread the silver out also. It's going to be like my second uh, metallic, so not as much silver as the uh, copper. Um, so at this point I've got uh, pretty much all of it done and you can see right now I've, I've put a coat of uh, just satin varnish over the whole thing and if you now notice uh, now it doesn't look as goofy with the uh, with the hex pattern you can see that now the hex pattern in the background the black is the same degree of uh, shininess um, this is what I recommend doing with any model. It'll bring the shininess of your model all to the same point. Because uh, even Games Workshop uh, paint will vary a little bit in how glossy or flat it is. So right here I'm going to add some decals. Uh, if you'd like to see more about how to do decals, I have it sped up here, but I'm going to slow this down and have it as a decal video. Uh, as soon as I'm able to format it and put it up. Just on how to use decals, uh, microset and microsol are what I'm using. Uh, they're not necessary, but they help. Uh, basically, if it's a rounded surface, they help keep the creases out of it, the bubbles out of it. And I was incredibly pleased. Really, really pleased. I've never done anything this big and curved. Uh, the bigger your um, transfer is, the more curved or the more... Uh, not flat your surface is you're going to start getting a lot of creases bubbles and really bad stuff and i've used this to an extent but nothing this curved and nothing this big um and it i was turned out really really well like all my stuff looks painted on absolutely no creases uh once it got all dry uh but basically what you do is you're going to water slide it on there uh use the micro uh saw first which is what you use to put it on and then the micro set, you let it dry, you put the micro set on like this. And then uh, you kind of dab it off and you let it dry completely again. And then you put it on as many times as needed. So you can see what I'm doing here is I did it about three times. Uh, this is the third time I go over it. And every time, you can even see a little bit, it's hard to see, but moving more and more of these little creases, it's going to kind of dissolve the transfer and let it... Uh, form there and at this point what I'm doing is using a brush wiping it off my hands and using like a sponge to kind of squeegee out all the water I also put some small uh, uh, transfers on the body and I, this one's tiny and I couldn't even get it to focus correctly uh, kind of a big towel in there and then some stripes on the front 
Uh, other than that, I just did the back door and the two side doors. Uh, I didn't want to go nuts with them, but uh, they turned out pretty well. The only thing I did not like is that these pieces on the straight blue right here uh, ended up, the clear parts really did kind of show up a lot more than I wanted them to, um, which might be fixable if they ever want to go back and uh, put some gloss over it. Uh, sometimes that'll hide it. I would recommend gloss underneath and above the transfers. So, at this point, we're all done with transfers. I get out my Sharpie pen. This is a cheap way. Not really, che well, cheap, yeah. Uh, it's honestly a lazy way to do lining on tanks that have big grooves like Tau tanks, uh, Eldar tanks, even Rhinos and stuff. And I just get this uh, Sharpie and just basically draw in my lines. Uh... The only problem you'll have with this is that the pen will want to stop producing ink after a while. So you can see I kind of scribble on the paper. Every once in a while when it's not like putting out enough ink, scribble on the paper, get the tip wet again, and just kind of paint it in. Uh, you might get a slightly better effect with ink, but it'll take a lot longer. I really enjoyed doing it like this. It's very fast, and you get a very re dip dark, <laughs> dark and rich black color in the crevices there uh, so got all that done before I seal it um, I haven't sealed it again yet we're gonna do this and I lost the majority of this video um, it my computer died on me and I didn't realize it what I used is some black and I sprayed uh, I ended up spraying smoke on the back of the engines and if you can see there in the corner there's the small silver vents on the left and right, I added a little bit of smoke coming off the back of those uh, towards the body of the, there you can see a little bit better there. So it kind of looks like it's moving forward and the smoke has been coming out. I didn't want to cover up a lot of my hex pattern, but I felt that that gave it some good wear. So at this point to seal in everything, uh, sealing in the transfer sheets, uh, getting the color even better, is uh, just going to go ahead and use this Duracell clear coat. Uh, and you can use a spray, uh, spray can if you don't use an airbrush. It works just as fine. But you always want to clear coat stuff. Especially if you put uh, transfer sheets on because they will just chip off. If there's nothing on top of them, they will, they will chip off. So here's the final stage. This is assembly. Start gluing my doors on. Uh, I go ahead and uh, put in my back piece uh, and also my vents. The vents I uh, left black. Eventually, I decided I'm going to wait till I get all my tanks and things that have vents together. And I'm going to do the glow on those all at once because I really want them to be the same amount of glow. And because that's going to be a lot of airbrushing, I want to make sure it matches throughout my tanks. Uh, so I just left them black for now. Put the landing gear on. If you have a keen eye, you can see I did put a magnet at the bottom of each piece of landing gear. I'm hoping, and I haven't tried this yet, but I'm hoping that I can set this in my box, which my whole army is magnetized, uh, and it will sit in there magnetized, hopefully. The next paint is Blood from the Blood God, a technical paint from... GW, and you're probably wondering, what, what, why are you putting blood on your tank? Well, I found a really good use for this stuff. It's one of the most amazing paints I've used, by the way. It's supposed to look like blood. It never fully dries. It's always this wet, glossy color. Uh, I found it makes excellent uh, lenses for Tau. And uh, I went ahead and put them on the hatch cover, uh, a little bit of the back stuff, and then the front lens, I put it on there. I... It, it's made for blood that looks amazing. I, I say get a get a bottle of it for your armies. It's just really, really cool paint. But also, uh, the lens thing does work really well. Let's see if I can get a shot of it here in a minute after I finish getting the uh, front lens done. A lot of this, I tried to get it in frame, but I was like, I need to make sure this looks good above all else. So here's the finest product. I think it looks pretty good. And I made these pictures go pretty fast, but hopefully the last one will take a little longer. I think it turned out great. Um, it was a lot of work, but I liked it. And so, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Later.